Hello, everyone. I'm Victoria. And, and I'm Carlos Luna. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this is Learning Roll 20, where Carlos and I are going to walk you through the basics of Roll 20 in a nice, friendly, meandering pace. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a chatty thing. Uh, we're here for the people on Twitch right now. Uh, so if you're new to Roll20 and, you know, you just had some questions, you wanted to pop in the chat, we'll be doing this show weekly where you can just jump in and chat with us. Uh, it's not anything like uh, huge production <laughs> like you would find on like a YouTube page, you know, and a, a specific walkthrough, a streamlined walkthrough. There's tons of those tutorials on YouTube. Uh, you could also find them on the Roll20 Help Center as well. Uh, so uh, this is more of a laid back talk uh, and like kind of learn and uh you know, answer your question. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you have questions today about the compendium, which is what we're going to be the main part of what we're talking about, please throw them in chat and uh, we'll be able to hopefully get those answered for you. Yeah. Uh, so how was your week since last time? Yeah, it was good. It yeah? was good. Just uh, playing a lot of games. I had people send me games. So you can build other games on Roll20. You just don't have to play like Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. And some people convert board games uh, on on to roll 20 uh and a i saw some this weekend and they're amazing um i nice. wish i could talk more in detail or <laughs> I, I don't know the specifics about the ip uh, if i can mention them and, and whatnot uh but people do some amazing things on the platform yeah i've played card games on yeah. roll 20 which has been a blast so uh, yeah sure. i i can see that translating for sure you do any gaming this weekend i did um, I had D and D on Saturday, which we did here on Roll Twenty. I run a game for some friends, and we got to build a settlement, and that was really exciting. Um, the beginning of the settlement, and then there was some fun mechanics going on with that. With they, they got to like had to choose and some, you know, some inventory management kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. no, it was fun. Uh, we had a good time and star trek we played some star trek adventures oh wow yeah 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 you can play that on roll 20 right yes yeah. you can and yeah. we do, <laughs> you do. Yeah, yeah yeah we do um it was a lot of fun i i play a bajoran pilot sweet yeah so cool 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 um let's kind of get into this Oh, thanks to you, Jack's not funny. Yeah, so for ease, uh, please put QUESTION in capitals before yeah. your question so that we can quickly see it as we're skimming through. Uh, and let's let's get to it, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so we left off last time. You created a game, and then we created a character. Yes, we walked through the character sheet. Yes, we walked through the character mancer. So today we're looking at the con the, the, the condominium, <laughs> the compendium. Yeah, the condominium. <laughs> the condominium. Yes. Yeah, we're I walking distracted. through. <laughs> I, saw, I saw a question in the chat. Um, do you have to download maps in order to run maps in game? Um, it's a weird question. Not a weird question. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain that. Uh, no? Yes? I guess you could build your own maps. You can people, build your own maps. Yeah, I've built my own maps. Own, yeah, um, people build their own maps. Mm -hmm. Drag and drop. Yeah, yeah. drag and drop. Um, put them in there with your own images. Um, now, if you really want, you can go to the marketplace and you can download maps and run those. Um, but yeah. you can make your own. I've made plenty of my own. Um, sometimes I just draw them. Yeah, so there's a draw tool on on roll 20 that allows you to you know make lines and draw it or you, there's even like in the art library where you have your tokens in your maps and stuff where you would like if you bought something from the marketplace it'll be in that art library but then there's also like a section that just searches google like <laughs> it searches google for you uh, yes. so if you know keywords or maybe you save them on a you know another site that you have or someplace else like you can find them using that keyword search mm -hmm. uh, and just you know drag them on it really depends on what you're building on the map. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So compendium. First things first. Uh, you. What is the compendium? Yeah, that's a real good question. That that that. What is it? So a compendium is really it is a database of information that you can then search to find that 
information. So it is takes books. So like your monster manual, the player's handbook, uh, you know, Volo's Guide to Monsters, all of that stuff is there. And then you can download those from the marketplace. And then you have access to those books um, through the compendium. And then you can, yeah, search all your, search till your heart's content to find yeah. all of that content. Yeah, the best way to, to think about it is just like, okay, you bought these books uh, on the marketplace um, and they are added to your compendium, your collection. I guess you can use, we could replace the word compendium with collection. Um, so imagine having those books, and but instead of like searching through each book separately for like one thing that you want, uh, it'll search all the books at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll pull out similar things. It, it depends what you're searching for, but if you wanted to find like items, it'll bring up all the items. If you want to bring up like one specific type of item, it'll search that keyword through all your books. Uh, so, you know, you play Dungeons and Dragons, you have a lot of books. Uh, mm -hmm. So instead of making you go through all of them, it'll search and categorize them um, and organize them. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. And uh, I see a question real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, question, I, sorry, I, I don't know exactly how we should be doing this, if we should be, if we should be answering some of them and interrupting. Uh, but uh, one of the questions is, I can't afford right now for any of the books or assets. Where can I keep an eye for possible discount coupons? Um, so normally Roll20 doesn't do a lot of discounts or bundles. Uh, a lot of those prices are fixed by our marketplace creators um, or they're fixed by our partners. Um, we do have some occasionally, uh, uh, especially when, you know, in, in the last couple of months, a lot of the partners have been wanting to make things discounted. Uh, and put them on the marketplace. The best place to look for those things is on the Roll20 blog. So if you're on Roll20, uh, you can go over, hover over community and click on blog. Uh, they do updates there weekly, uh, maybe even a couple times a week. Uh, and they do like a weekly roundup of everything that is going on on uh, Roll20. So that's a good place to find out where things are on sale or for free actually. I think D&D still has some some stuff for free. Uh, mm -hmm. I think they, they had Lost Minds up for free for a long time. I, I'm, I think that might be expired. I think that expired on the first, but there might be something else still up there that you can download. I, I know Wild Mount, one of the adventures in Wild Mount, you could, you could still download, I think. And the um, SRD is oh yeah, the included. SRD. It's yeah. included already. So that is all of your basic D, &D stuff um that's all of your classes all of the like the main core book races um and then it also includes one subclass per each class yeah. um and it includes all of the monsters except for some things like mind flayers things that are trademarked um by um by Wizards of the Coast are not included in there, but all the other monsters are, most yeah. of them, the vast majority of them. And if you own the books already, and you, or you have access to the books already, uh, you can always add them in yourself into mm -hmm. your own game. Uh, it'll take a little bit longer, uh, rather than having like, click, I own it. Uh, but uh, that capability is still available to you, whether or not you, you can literally set up everything that you have on, at home like online for free on Roll20. Um, it's gonna take a little bit longer, um, but yeah, you, you can definitely do that. And you mm -hmm. can find a lot of things. I mean, if you, yeah, search online, you can find maps and stuff like that for sure. Um, yeah, let's jump, jump right in because yeah. I, I feel like I keep interrupting you, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay, <laughs> we're getting a lot of questions, but um, I, I understand. Um, so what you would do first is sometimes you do want to share your compendium with your players um, so that they can add spells or they can add subclasses that let's say you have purchased those extra books from the marketplace so you have access to them so let's say your players are going to be the ones leveling up their own characters by sharing your compendium you allow them to have access to it uh, so how you would do that normally is you go to your main home page of the game and you click settings. Okay. Cool. Uh, unfortunately, so that's, the, that's your game that you have like set up for yes. us. I'm invited. Yeah. You're invited. Oh, well, actually you created, I created this. that one. You I created, created that one. this. Yeah. Um, so you'll, okay. Yeah. 
So you created this and you invited me. Now, as a player, I don't have access to that. That's not there for me. But if you are, I created a new one just to show oh, everyone. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you are the creator, so I am the creator here, I have that option of going to game settings. Gotcha. So right now, uh, what you're looking on the screen is the difference between a game that you created and a game that uh, Victoria didn't create. Yes. Uh, so the first one that you saw on screen was a game that I invited Victoria to. Mm -hmm. uh, you notice when she looked at that drop down, it was missing certain things. Uh, even though she was still put as a game master on that game, uh, she still doesn't have access to everything in my account. Right. Uh, so like th that's where like a separation comes. Um, mm. these, these are really good scenarios too, because mm -hmm. like these are very specific nitty gritty stuff that like people don't, pe people have these questions, but yeah. Yeah. It, it, things that, um, they're those little learning curve things that you figure out as you go, but it's nice to have someone just point them out to you. Yeah. So you know. and, and we get questions a lot that are like, well, this is how D and D works. How come it doesn't work like that on your platform? Like it would be easier if it looked, worked like this on your platform. Um, and those are completely valid suggestions, right? Uh, but sometimes, but we have to remember about Roll20, it's not specifically Dungeons and Dragons, right? It's system agnostic. So it has to work for a wide spectrum of games. Mm -hmm. uh, so while while it could be designed tighter and tighter for specifically Dungeons and Dragons, because it's system agnostic, um, it, it, it really has to leave a lot of these, um, you know, things open for other games that people play. Exactly. Um, so once you go into game settings, you've pressed, the, uh, you've gone here to settings, you've gone to game settings, you scroll down a little bit, there are a ton of settings here. Um, yeah. We are not going to focus on these today. Um, I'll just quickly scroll down to see there are lots and lots and lots of things. <laughs> that you can customize so much things that you can customize but and it, it might feel overwhelming too yeah. right because like look at that but like that bottom section is just the character sheet right mm -hmm. so well, not just the character sheet but kind of just tokens and that character in general uh it's the sheet settings so pretty much everything above like that line the d and above the that character sheet is kind of like setting specifically for this game, mm -hmm. um, which seems a little overwhelming, but the more you get, you, the more you use Roll Twenty, the more you'll think, the more these problems will show up. Where you're like, oh, I want to be able to do this, you know, um, and you'll like sharing compendium is one of them, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so you just go down at the beginning. You just to here. You'll have a list of all of your games that you have available to share with people. Um, and you just click on, yes, I would like to share my compendium with players. So right there. Yeah. That's it. You press yes, yeah. and then you scroll down, and you save changes. Yeah, and this is a great way, you know, we recommend it, like, the company even recommends it as, like, Roll20 will recommend, like, hey, if you've got a gaming group that you're always playing with, like, it's not unheard of just to like buy the book as a group, like mm -hmm. everyone just pitch in and buy the book and like gift it to your, D your GM and then your GM shares it with everyone in the group. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like the group bought it. So it doesn't rely on one person all the time. So that's, that's a way around it too. Uh, if you are, you know, it, like we're all strapped for cash right now. So it's like, oh, we really want the book. It's just like, well, just ask the people you play with, you know, like, hey, you guys want to go in on books with me? That yeah. could be a thing too. Yeah. Um, There's yes, a lot uh, of groups that do that. Um, just so that uh, the GM, the onus isn't on the GM all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not yeah. seeing any questions. Saw a few. Um, oh, I'm just looking for the word question. Question, question uh, in all capitals. How would you grab content from another module's? Compendium. Um, my group finished uh, LM OP in person. Just started. Lost Minds of Pendelver. Yeah. Just started SDK online. Uh, any way to grab those old uh, treasures? Um, 
I think you can do that from uh, the transmogrifier. Wait, you you didn't play. You played them in person. If you you played them in person, I don't know how you're transferring from in person to like on on the VTT. Uh, mm -hmm. You could always enter those things if you own those modules that have those treasures. Uh, you can use the transmogrifier from an old game to like import that stuff over. Uh, if it's tied to a character sheet, uh, you can use the character vault. Your players can use the character vault uh, to transfer over that character as well. Um, doo -doo -doo. Questions as the macro quick bar wrap around. I've got too many buttons. Um, there's a way like you can click. You don't have to have them all there. Um, you can click the ones you just need for that time. You might be asking, like, does it actually wrap around in general? Um, I believe it does. I believe it gets to the end and then it stacks to another row, right? It doesn't go. Yeah, I've never had that many. I've never had that many. I've either. never That's had that many. Yeah. yeah, I've never <laughs> had that many on at the same time. But different games have different things, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I try to be cool about the answering that question. I was just like, yeah, I've done that. I'm like, no, I've never. No, that I've never had that many macros. People make amazing things on this platform. And it's like, I saw one guy make a, uh, a teleportation API. So when your uh, token hits a certain spot, it teleports to a different part of the VTT automatically. That's like, amazing. Automatically. Like, it's amazing. Everyone oh look, my look that up. It's great. Um, I just get excited when I use magic effects. Let alone <laughs> <that>. <laughs> um, there is a question uh, to have access to those settings. Does the DM need to have an active subscription? No, you no. do not. Uh, so how this goes is uh, for compendium sharing is for free users, you can share up to five players in one game. So that's six people total, you being the sixth person and then five other people. Um, and you can only do that in one game. Yeah. If you are a plus subscriber, you get 10 players that you can give to. And how many games is that? No more... Three active games. It's three games. Yeah. So you have three games um, that are going on with 10 players. For a pro subscriber, that is when you get 15 over five games. Yeah, that's a lot. That's but a I lot. Mean, at, that point, at that point, you are a pro. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like if you're playing that much with that many different people, like you are a pro, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's a lot. I that's mean, a lot of gameplay. I wish I played that much. Yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. kind of do. To be uh, honest, I kind of do. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I played, like, in, well, I guess a lot of us can't remember the last time we played in person. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> I think we're all in the same boat right now. Uh, <laughs> but, like, be, even before, like, I can't remember the last time. I, I play so much online and I stream so much that, like, uh, like I can't remember the last time someone wasn't watching me play. And I, w I wonder, yeah, what how right? different that would be. like To just play? Yeah, I, I mean, have I two games where I just play and there's no audience. Are you different? Are you different in the game? Uh, it's more lackadaisical. Um, yeah. There's a little bit more table talk and like we're pretty good. We stay on top, like stay on. Yeah. Um, but there's a little bit more. It's relaxed. There's more wine involved. Ooh. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, it is. That is one thing that's really nice. I need I need the adrenaline of people watching me to play. <laughs> so that, that's what I need. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, back to the compendium. Yeah, uh, back to the compendium. So that is how you give people access. Yeah. All right. I am going to. Switch. Oh, and we should mention that if you purchase one of these, this is another question that we get. If you purchase a book through the marketplace, uh, you might be searching. You might be thinking like, oh, where is it? How how do I find it? Uh, all that stuff. It, it You know, it's a question we get. It's right under tools. Uh, if you could hover right over tools. Oh, I don't whoops. know if you've there clicked off on that. Uh, hover over tools. There's a compendium right there. Uh, that's oh, if you're yeah. outside of a game. That's if you're outside of a game. Um, if you're inside your game, it'll like automatically be there. Um, but you don't have to load anything. You don't have to select anything. Uh, there, I don't even know if I can talk about that because that's something we're working on right now. Uh, should have checked in. Oh, um, why is it showing my Twitch? 
Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's Sorry, y'all. Uh, it's fine. We'll just um, do this. But yeah, it's it. A lot of people ask, like, okay, well, how do I select? Um, do you want to be right back? Do you want to pause? Oh, there it goes. No, oh, no, I'm I'm gonna fix this. You continue talking okay. while I fix this. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes people ask, um, well, I bought it from the marketplace. Uh, how do I how do I get to it? And one of those one of those ways is you have to go through the compendium in the toolbar, or you can start a game using that type of character sheet. Now, when I say character sheet, uh, I also mean system, right? Um, the reason that there's a difference, though, is because there could be different character sheets by different people. Uh, roll to, again, Roll20 system agnostic, people on our site make character sheets, uh, and that includes Dungeons & Dragons. So there is an official Dungeons & Dragons 5e character sheet that Roll20 made, and that's the one that we're showing, that we show today. That's the one that a lot of online people play, uh, and it's great. Uh, but there are people in the community that have worked on other character sheets for Dungeons and Dragons mm -hmm. that you might want to look into uh, or for different editions, right? Like 3.5, uh, there's uh, one for 3.5 on there that looks different uh, and functions different. So um, the reason the reason when you're creating a game, it asks you to choose a character sheet and not specifically a system is because one, the character sheet that it, it's cutting to the chase, right? Because the character sheet that you choose will go to the system. Mm -hmm. um, and it's in it's that character sheet will be able to like interact, um, yeah. So you don't have to load your books into Roll Twenty uh, that you purchase from the marketplace. I guess that's the long long answer short. <laughs> short answer long. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so that was how you can find it through just your regular homepage. Thank you, because I totally forgot about that one. So you just go up to Tools and you go down to Compendium. And you'll find other games there too. Yes. Because um, some some of the other games, I don't have my free account open here right now, um, but I know there are other compendiums for other games um, that are free as well. Let me. There are. There are. Do you know what they are offhand? Um, yeah, there's a bunch of them. There's you can there's look them up. Uh, Star Trek Adventures, is mm. one of them, because uh, my husband's running that and he has a free account. Yeah. Uh, so Star Trek is one. Yeah. Fate? There's a bunch of them. I think Fate, I, I want to say uh, Dungeon World. Yeah. A, a bunch of those. Isn't Pathfinder? Um, Pathfinder might be on there too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you can try out other stuff, especially if it has like open access to those things. And some people find Roll20 from the compendium, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're searching for a spell, uh, online or in game or something, a lot of people find these compendium pages through Google. Mm -hmm. um, so you might have, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, get started on Roll20 because they did a search for a spell and they saw that like, oh, the SRD, the Dungeons and Dragons SRD is available on the open compendium on Roll20. Um, and then, you know, that's the easy way in. I'm just showing everyone the, the compendium there. Um, and then once you actually go into the game, you have access to the compendium there. Yeah. So you would go up to the information symbol, the I in the circle. And when you hover over, it says compendium. You click on it and it will have all of the information here, just some categories for you of all of the material that you own. And remember the SRD, um, so is, is there. Mine is yeah. gonna have everything because I yeah. have an account I was with just everything about to say, on it. <laughs> I was just about, yours, yours will show everything. And you can see the difference between each book. There's a symbol on the right-hand side um, that will show up. So just search for something through the compendium. Um, search bard um all right bard i'm sure bard is mentioned in a million things bard great uh there is the D, D dungeons and dragons logo the ampersand mm -hmm. uh and underneath it it has you know an abbreviation of the title of your book so uh, we got oh, that, AI. That, that information is Which coming is, from yeah so there's ai for acquisitions incorporated xanathar's guide to everything and so forth 
it'll tell you. So if you're looking for something specific, you've got a better chance of finding it by looking at those symbols. Yeah. And okay. So there is one thing about this compendium that is my favorite. What's your favorite thing? My favorite is drag and drop spells. Yes. A lot of people don't know this. Like, it's so handy. A lot of people do not know this. And especially because it's like, wait, it does this? Like it, when, when, uh, when I figured it out, I was like, wait, I was just messing around with the program and mm -hmm. I found it. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. So we made Quizzle the other day. Yes. Um, so let's say Quizzle gets a spell. Quizzle's a barbarian and doesn't really have much, but pretend, pretend yeah. Quizzle just got a spell. Yeah. We can go to the compendium. And what spell does Quizzle take, Carlos? Oh, God. Uh, prestidigitation. That sounds like Presti something. Now, can I spell it? I don't yeah, have that's... to because it auto-populates. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry to put you on. Sorry to put you like, a right, uh, spotlight right on you. Uh... I'm like, hmm, prestidigitation. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have it here from the player's handbook. So now all I have to do is click and drag. And oh, look, it's right there. Fantastic. It's in my it's character so sheet. It's done. I love that. It's very handy. Okay. Yeah. I get excited over little things. No, it's great. Um, <laughs> I love that, you know, I love that it categorizes, it categorizes everything first in the books for you. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like your venture, your background, charms, classes, feats, items. Because sometimes I just want to like, you know, like books are great to flip through. I love flipping through books. I will always purchase books and I will always look at them. Like, I don't think that I think some people like to have the argument like online versus, you know, like in person and all that. And I don't think there needs to be an argument there. I mm. think it's just like, it's like cooking, right? Like it's like cooking, right? Because I own an oven and I own a microwave, you know, and I own a toaster. It's, I use them differently when I want to like eat differently, when I want to make something. Uh, it depends what I'm making and depends what type of experience I want to have, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have an hour to like make a pot roast or however long <laughs> it takes to make a pot roast, I'm just making this up at this point, right? <laughs> like, like if you cook and you know how long it takes to make a pot roast, don't yell at me, uh, whatever. Uh, but yeah, like if you, if, if you don't have time for that, or if you do, or if you like this quality versus that quality, I mean, it's all good for anyone. Like you can use all three or four or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. like roll 20 goes great with a bunch of other stuff too. Um, um, milk porch. Sometimes you said that you can't find the spell and it's not a complete spell list. Um, it's the complete spell list for the SRD. The SRD is complete. Um, so if the spell you're looking for is from a book that you do not own um yeah. on roll 20 it's not gonna show up yeah yeah so that that is you know with anything right yep like if you look up in any book that you don't have you don't have that book so. <laughs> no um but yeah if you have access again it, it might not be in your companion because you again the companion is only looking through books that you have um mm -hmm. But if you don't have that book, you know what you want to add. Um, Roll20 still allows you to add it. You have to do it manually. Um, but you do, you, you know, you have access to that information. Put it on. All right. That's the compendium, folks. Yeah. Pretty easy. Yeah. Do we well, we're want... We're still, still answering questions, so... Yeah. yeah. We're still answering questions. We can show a little bit of dice rolling. Yeah, let's show some dice rolling. Yeah, some rolling. dice rolling. There are a few different ways that you can roll a die. Um, the first one being, can you see my chat? Let's see. Yeah, you should be able to. Um, so let's say you want to roll a d20, and your modifier for this roll is plus three. Okay. So you would just type in the forward slash roll 1d20 plus three we got a roll i rolled a 13 not so great but if it's a low dc i probably made it yeah 
Um, so yeah, so that that's one way. That That's your basic whatever you want to roll. So let's say you need to roll 3d6. You do the same thing. Forward slash roll 3d6. Now look, you got 3d6 rolled. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's a pretty basic way of just typing it in chat. Yeah. Now there are other ways to roll dice. And that's a good way if you are, um, you know, if you have the keyboard handy. Some people play mm -hmm. with a keyboard handy uh, because they have other things on their screen um, and they might not be using the, the game uh, for the BTT, right? They might right. not be using the graphical interface like that uh, or they might not have access to that or they, you know, um, so I guess I mentioned that because sometimes people ask questions like, well, why would you ever have that when you can obviously click on this for that? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's some people, you know, don't have mice that they click on. They have a keyboard, you know, yep. um, some people just like typing things. Yeah. They, they, some people, some people are like, well, why don't you just say that what you're doing or whatever? It's just like, well, some people don't play with video and voice on. You know what I mean? Like some people just play with chat and that's how they do it. And that's how mm -hmm. they do their communication. Um, so there's a million different types of games out there. Um, you know, and that's something that like I had to learn when I first started like here. Um, I was just like, well, I've always played like this. So doesn't everyone play like that? It's like, no, there are millions <laughs> of ways to play this game. There are. I know someone who just played text-based game, not voice yeah. chat. They just text. That's it um yeah so it's, it's fun um so yeah uh Alephus, i hope i pronounced that correctly um you're talking about to the if you just want to roll a secret roll to the dm the gm yeah uh you just forward slash gm roll and then whatever the roll is i'll just say 1d20 and now the GM just got a private role that none of the other players could see. Yeah. And that's really good. Like in your game, that happens all the time, right? Um, or it could happen all the time. Mm -hmm. A lot of these are just like, you know, add-ons to, uh, they're not specifically like you need this to run a game. Like you absolutely cannot run your game without it. Um, but like, yeah, you can add that to your arsenal of things that you're doing. Just because you're online and in front of everyone right now mm -hmm. uh, doesn't mean Roll20 doesn't have, like, secret ways for you to send messages or you to whisper to each other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can send uh, a whisper to your GM if you want. You know? Yeah, uh, forward so. slash W and yeah. then their name. What is your name on here? Um, Carlos Crips, probably. Yeah, there we go. You start typing it. And then a drop down menu oh, shows, shows up. up. Carlos Chris. Private. So now Carlos got a private message. Um, and uh, there's another yeah. way to roll dice. Yeah, what's the other way to roll dice? Uh, so on the left hand side here, you will see a menu. And there is a D20 on there. And a table. So if you just need to roll one d20, you just do the first one. No, look, it just rolls it for you. Or if you need a d12, or if you need two d20. Yep. There you go, two d20. So yeah, the quick dice roller, just go over uh, and just go down the dice column that you need. So mm -hmm. d4, d6, and then go right on how many you want to throw. So two, three, four, five. These are the quick rolls. So obviously mm -hmm. you can do higher than that. Uh, what I like to do, uh, and what I like to do for new players uh, that are just starting out on roll 20, so they don't get overwhelmed. They might be starting out on Dungeons and Dra in Dungeons and Dragons on roll 20 for the first time. Uh, one of the first things that I do, I tell them to do is open up your character sheet and click the dice button. So click the dice button in the toolbar. Uh, and that opens up the dice roller. So they always have it open on on screen. Uh, and they can, it's kind of like having like your dice pool right in front of you. Um, and this gets them used to knowing what dice is in front of them. Because I remember when I first started playing Dungeons and Dragons, like 
people would say like, oh yeah, just roll a D8 plus five. And I'm like, I don't know what that means, man. Like, I don't even know about? which one the D8 was for exactly. the longest time. And I'd have to sit there and count sides. And, right? Uh, yeah. It's like whoever made the D10 and the D8, it was just like, oh. And then the D12? Just... Yeah. It, yeah. You know what? We can, we can talk. We'll save that for a <laughs> podcast called Dice Talk. Uh, where we just talk about dice shapes. Uh, it's great. Each episode is four hours long. Oh, wow. Uh, we've, we've been running for six years. Uh, <laughs> yep, yep. Carlos we'll and I have known each other shape. for six years yeah, and have had years. a podcast. How long have we known each We've known each other for a long time, right? Two years? No, longer than two years. Yeah, we met at Gen Con 2018. But I knew the broadswords before you guys had an episode you did yeah i messaged you before and i was just some creepy guy <laughs> like because I, I was really i was really not to get off topic for but i was really into the, like the, the actual play podcasting scene and i was doing high production audio dramas at that time mm -hmm. uh, so i was writing music doing sound effects doing like a full thing and i remember you had this like campaign going on like before your first episode yeah, dropped, you're like, you here we are. We're going to be awesome behind the scenes. <laughs> and it was, just, I was just like, who's this? And I was just like, I want to listen to this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I remember that. that. But that had to be like, maybe that was like 2017. I guess time. Yeah, was that was 2017 yeah. is when yeah. we started. But we met Gen Con of 2018. Yes, we met. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Not to get out. Parasocial track. relationships. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, okay milk porch i'm glad uh that you got to check the stream good luck on good luck on your game yeah That's good luck such a big moment it's so and i know how how stressful that could be especially because you want to do a good job and you really want people to have fun right like that's all we're doing is just like wanting to people wanting people to have fun with the art that you make and you know the games that you play so good luck um i'm wishing you luck <laughs> yes, um yeah and then i mean with these D, &D uh character sheets you can also just click on the mall so let's say i want to attack someone with a mall i just yes. literally click mall wow i crit nice nice we had that planned we had the developers go <laughs> in for this very specific role and no way they, they, they would tell us to go away <laughs> we are busy uh yeah no that's great like it, and you could have it even set up in your game so it so if you want to roll roll the damage for that roll for damage i just click on mall you just click mall and there's ways that you can set it up in your game that the damage will roll automatically right if mm. you don't even want to wait for that uh, you can set it up so it hits everyone in the game, or you can set it up specifically on that character sheet in the settings if you click um, the little gear icon in settings. Um, so that's a great one to, to know. Mm -hmm. um, what else is a good one? Well, there's the advanced dice roller, which I don't think is that advanced. I think it's actually pretty great. <laughs> it's, it's actually my favorite dice roller yeah, on here. let's see it. Um, so when you go over to where your table is, your basic roller, your quick roll, um, you go down to advanced dice roller, click that, and you get this pop-up window that shows up. Um, and so what I like about it is because you can add modifiers to it in your roll. Yeah. So you can just click. Now you can just do your quick roll of 1d20, okay? Um, or you can add your modifier that you want to add and then roll, and then you got it. Yeah. This and then it, I... sorry, oh. it keeps your last 10 rolls memorized. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you scroll down and it keeps your last 10 rolls. So if oh. you're in a combat and, and if you're a wallet, a warlock, a wallock, if you're a warlock and you're just blasting Eldric Blast over and over and over again, um, your saved rolls, you just quick click of a button. That's awesome. Yeah, this is, you know, new to roll 20 or if your players are new to roll 20, I highly recommend like show them, click your character sheet, click this dice roller, you are ready to go. Like, mm -hmm. that's really all you need. Like, it, it can be as, you know, uh, flourished or complicated as you want, but at the bare minimum, you could just have them click the character sheet and then click the dice roller. Um, and I feel like that covers, like, a lot of the bases. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, 
Um, there's other things you can do. Um, like even uh, people close uh, people close the boxes a lot. Like they close the pages that they're on, mm -hmm. even though they know they're going to open up in a second and they have to click back to the tab. But you can just double click the top of it. Um, if you double click, open up a, a character sheet or a dice roller and just double click the top. It's small. Yeah. Like it minimizes itself in the game. You could also pop them out. Um, yes. But like, I forget all, like I was closing boxes like all the time. I didn't even know that existed for the longest time. And I like how it look, brings the transparency down too. Yeah, that's nice. So you could still see behind it. Yeah. Yeah, session I'm zero is a good time to go over the technical aspects of the DTP, David. Um, mm -hmm. We are gonna have an entire episode on session zero. Yes, we are. Um, but there's a lot to go over here. But yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, during that session zero, um, you know, you can do the you can do your session zero and have people like go through like pushing buttons and stuff like that, and they don't have to be afraid later. Because then you get afraid, right? Because like when you're new when you're new to the system, uh, you wanna poke around and click a bunch of buttons and figure out what it is. Um, I recommend that too. Like I recommend building a game, inviting people to it and say, go crazy. Just click whatever you want. Click gears and icons and just roll dice because like you end up, you don't want to be the one who pushes a button and then it, it sends a message to the chat that looks like you, that. So everyone knows that you're looking at the spell magic missile, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because like, like Whatever. Uh, yeah, I, I recommend people doing that too. Just having fun with it and just, you know, clicking everywhere. Mm -hmm. Do we have any more questions? Yeah. Question, questions. Question, how do you include a new add-on to a game? Ooh. That's a good question. That is a good um, question. Yeah, so I guess to explain that is uh, people might not know the difference between an add-on, a module, a rule book. Um, they, you know, it starts getting, again, because Roll20 is system agnostic. Um, there are many different names and many, and a bunch of games might do this, but not that. So we had to find different ways uh, for that hierarchy to be labeled. Um, a module, uh, uh, a rule book is exactly that. Uh, it, it'll be in your compendium. It has rules, drag and drop. It doesn't necessarily have to have an adventure in it, right? Uh, because there are settings. Uh, that doesn't necessarily have like, oh, I have these tokens, these are characters that you play and stuff. That, but like a module will have that. Um, and it's not to say some could have, you know, 85%, you know, and then, you know, 15%, it, it could be split in a bunch of different ways. Um, an add-on though uh, can be used on your game um, no matter what module is being played for that specific game, right? Uh, for that specific system. So, um, an example of an add-on would be like the deck of many, um, what's it called? The deck, deck of many, of many things. things. The deck of many things, yeah. So like that would be an add-on. That's an add-on that you can put into your Dungeons and Dragons game, whether or not you have the SRD and nothing else, or you have, you know, SRD, Monster Manual, you know, Descent to Avernus, whatever you have, you can always add the deck of many things to it um, because it does exactly that. It's an add-on. Um, and do you have it pulled up? Can you pull up um, the game settings? Um, it's like right when you log into that game. Oh, setting. into the game setting. Into the game settings, yeah. Uh, that front page. Because um, you'll you'll get these things on the marketplace. Oh right. Um, I got to go you'll, into. You'll you'll be wondering. Um, you know, you'll you'll buy different things on the marketplace. And you'll be wondering, well, well, how do I get to this or how do I get to that? Um, so if we go to my games in, uh, yeah, right there. So right in the middle, there is a section, uh, you want to go to the one that you created. Probably, probably. That I'm in the one I created. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm, I have a delay on Twitch. Oh, uh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, like, yeah, I realized I went, oh, I have to go into the one I created. But that's a, that's a good point too, because, um, it didn't show up on the one that you are the GM of, of me on. So go to that front page uh, where it had the banner um, and the launch button. Okay. And it's right in the middle, right there. Um, some do, people do, do don't know game. about it, right? Because you can add many add-ons to your game uh, if you buy them on the marketplace or whatever. Um, All right, I'm in the front page. 
and go to settings. Yeah. Game settings. Uh, hold, hold on. It, it, uh... Are, are you in the front page with the banner and yes. the, the launch settings? Okay, right in the middle, it'll say game add-ons. Right here. Yeah, so go ahead and click that. Let's add some Acquisitions Incorporated. Why not? Ooh. And then it'll like take a second and it might spin um, before it loads it. Uh, I think there's a limited amount of add-ons add that you can use. I'm not exactly sure. It might be capped out at like, five or six, I want to say. That's a uh, lot of add-ons in a game. It is a lot of add-ons to the game. Uh, so I I don't know how many you need. But yeah, that's the easiest way to use game add-ons. I would probably have to refresh this. Oh, wait, no, this is the one I made in the test game anyway. Ah. Uh, but I can go in there to launch game. Yeah. Justin, are there pre-made playlists uh, for, say, spooky, suspenseful, combat, tavern, etc., uh, or is it build your own playlist through the amazing uh, music collection? Um, yeah, you can upload your own music, yeah, uh, and you can have access to like Battle Bards or Tabletop something. I forgot the name of the other audio place. In Comptech. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you can also upload your own things. I'm not sure if you can, if there's pre-made playlists. That's a real good question, actually. Um, um, there is not. You gotta, you gotta create your own. Yeah, they're probably. Yeah, those playlists are probably game specific. Um, mm -hmm. but there is a, you know, some people do like make, uh, like they'll make a game, and they'll use it as like a template. Like they always want to have that. Uh, yeah. So they'll just make a copy of that game before they start a new one. Um, that's, you know, that's definitely more advanced for people who are, like, setting up lots of things. Yeah, as you can see on. on mine, I have a lot of music and a lot of playlists. I have a city building playlist for, because yeah. in my D&D &D campaign, they're building a city. So whenever we have our city building sessions, I have a playlist for that. Um, I've got, oh, I'm going to close that because that's the finale music that I used for uh, Broad Swords. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want several, any of those sneak You can have peeks. several playing at the same time, too. Yeah, you can. So, I mean, yeah. if you want it to be all I guess I mentioned scary. that. Scary. Uh, sorry, I mentioned <laughs> that because, you, yeah, yeah. If uh, There's like a Parks and Rec uh, episode where they put jazz and jazz <laughs> together to make some, I don't know. Anyways. Uh, no, the reason I mention that is because you can be playing on your playlist. You can make a playlist of like background music, right? Your yep. suspense, uh, your background, um, you know, uh, little melodies, right? You could have a melody in the background that's on a loop, whatever. Uh, at the same time, you could have another loop going that's like the mood, right? The suspense. Yes, part of the it. ambiance. And then on top of that, you could have another playlist that's just like. Sound fighting effects. action noise yeah, yeah like sound effects and you could have action noises going at the same time too um yeah so yeah it you could really build up uh your game mm -hmm. i've done that uh, not the multiple things uh, because i podcast so i have like software um but i've created my own layered things to play and then i upload it onto roll 20 and i can play it for everyone to uh yeah. to listen and then i evoke the emotions that i want <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh we got a question uh how do you how do you i think this is assign a token to a player so they can move it mm. um that is a really good question it is a good uh, question people get that ask that question all the time um it's very simple do you do you have the game open can you i do there's two ways in, so tokens, when they're assigned, when tokens are assigned to a character sheet, there's basically two ways to get inside them. Um, one of them is the settings, and then the other one is like where you see like the info and the character sheet, right? Uh, to get into the info and the character sheet from the VTT, you hold down shift and you double click. Uh, that'll open, that'll open up like uh, the bio, um, the character sheet, and then like the very specific attributes and um all the number stuff that you want to change on the back end of it mm -hmm. uh and then the other way is you double click on it um and that'll show up a new list and then there's like an edit button that's in that one on that token 
Mm -hmm. There is. Um, and that I find is often the easiest way. If you just click on the token itself and go to the settings, the cog, and then you can just assign it. Represents right there. Quizzle. Wait, represents character. Where's Quizzle? There we go. Represents Quizzle. Controlled by, determined by character sync. But we got saved. So this now is set. See, look, Quizzle's name shows up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, then you could go you... to the edit. And then you just go to can be edited and yes. controlled by. Make sure. Where's the token? Use selected token. Now we got it. Great. Yeah. And it's, you know. I agree with David in the uh, Twitch chat. Uh, I feel like token assignment is a whole video on its own. Yeah, I yeah. mean it can be right. Like you know, I think when you when you start when you start up, uh, you want to get started on roll twenty really quickly. Uh, you assume that like, oh, this token looks like my character, so it should be my character sheet. Um, but if you haven't connected the two, or if you didn't if you didn't check out our last video where we built it from scratch, um, like if you start it with artwork. And then you made a character, but you didn't add the, you didn't connect them together. Um, then yeah, it would be, you know, a little bit um, confusing, I guess. Yeah, it would uh, be. Like how do I, how do I connect the two? Because you can drag and drop artwork onto the VTT. Mm -hmm. So you'd be like, oh, there's my token, and then you're like, I'm gonna make a character sheet. Then you make a character sheet, and it shows up, and you're like, well, these two aren't talking to each other yet. Yeah. Um, so how you connect so them is go into the token and then connect it, or you can do from the character sheet and connect it to the token. Yeah. So you can do either, either or. or. Yeah. Yep. Um, we actually just went through that because like I said, before my Saturday game, um, we have a two new brand new players. They've never played like D and D before. Um, and then we have multiple people who had never used roll 20 before as well. So, um, I have been a teaching people how to play and how to use this all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, there is, um, there's, a, there's, there is a learning curve. There I'm is. not going to lie to you. There definitely is a learning curve. Um, and we're getting better with that. Uh, we're refining that with all our updates. Um, but it, it's because the program is so big and it's meant for so many different types of, mm -hmm. of gameplay, um, that like you, I mentioned this in the beginning of the stream, like you do think like, oh, well, they can refine this down. So it's simpler for dun when I play my Dungeons and Dragons game. But there's also someone on the other side of the world that's like, well, they can sim they can make this simpler. So when I'm playing my Starfinder game, it works like this. And, you know, when I play Call of Cthulhu, it's working like that. So, you know, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's got to be it's, it's a give and take, you know, um, question. Will the dynamic lighting update integrate with existing modules or uh, do we have to manually go in and change every uh, tile in the top drop down? You can actually change. I believe you can change that in settings uh, to the game. Um, I'll double check uh, when we do our dynamic lighting thing, but I'm pretty sure um, they'll fix all the I, I don't think they're going to push Right now we have le we have the legacy version and the updated lighting going at the same time, uh, so you have to opt into those things. Uh, but at a certain point, the legacy will go away, and the updated lighting will be. I guess to answer your question, updated lighting will be the standard, so it will change over. Uh, but as the two are going simultaneously right now, you have to opt into the updated dynamic lighting um, because some people have games that they're currently playing with the old lighting system. Uh, that they want to continue uh, doing. Um, so yeah, hope that answers your question. See, yeah, here, you've got to opt in. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. I think I we're think, about at time. Yeah, that we are at time. Yeah. So I thanks for joining play. us, everyone. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think actually tomorrow, or tomorrow, next week. Next week. We are going over a little bit more dice rolling in more detail, I believe. Yeah. I believe that was on the agenda. Um, and some other little fun things. So check us out tomorrow. Or tomorrow. I keep on saying tomorrow. They start you with it. You just want it to happen tomorrow. I do. I'm just excited. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so tune back in on Tuesday at the same time. I'm yeah. Victoria. I'm Carlos Luna. And have a great week. Have a great week.